Hasbunallah wa ni'mal wakil Ni'mal mawla wa ni'mal nasir A'udhu billahi sami' al-alimi min ash-shaitan ar-rajim Bismillahi ar-Rahman ar-Rahim Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen Wa salatu wa salam ala ashraf al-anbiya'i wal mursaleen Sayyidina wa ma'lana abil qasim muhammad وعلى آله طيبين طاهرين المعصومين عما بعد فقد قال الله الحكيم في كتابه الكريم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن الله لا يقير ما بكم حتى يقير ما بأنفسهم صلوات. The subject of this talk is change. تغيير وتبديل change and before I go further let me just add briefly that I'm once again honored to be speaking to my dear brothers that are in the Texas Department of Corrections being able to communicate with them uh, via DVD until I'm able to visit them is a blessing from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala nonetheless the subject of this talk is change Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Quran, إن الله لا يقير ما بقوم حتى يقير ما بأنفسهم Really Allah does not change the condition of a people until they change what is within themselves. Now first of all we must ask ourselves what is change? Uh, change is uh, replacing a thing or exchanging a thing, or altering something, or replacing something. This is different meanings of change. Some examples of change, obviously in our day and time, things have changed for the worse uh, rather than for the better. And one thing that must be understood, inshallah ta'ala, is that change is constant. We are always in a constant uh, uh, mode of change. For example, when we're born, we're weak and we change and become stronger and then we, on the downside, become weak again. Uh, likewise, when we're born, we begin to gather uh, knowledge, we become more knowledgeable and as we come on the downside, we become less knowledgeable, we become forgetful. Likewise, we become uh, you know, when we're born, we become stronger, and then we become weak again. Maybe I've said that, but just to reiterate. So we're in a constant mode of change. Nothing stays the same. And many of us have heard one time or another, uh, obviously this is not a good thing, but unfortunately many of us have heard this, oh, you'll never change. Or you're always going to be like this or that. Or you're always going to be no good. You're always going to be rotten. No, you're always going to be like this or that person. And this may or may not be true depending on each individual. Because we all have the, uh, the ability to change. And like I've said to many people from the member and side conversations, uh, as far as positive changes are concerned, we're not going to make any changes for anyone else. If we change, it has to be for our own uh, self and our own benefit. Now as we look at change, let's look at some examples of change. We look at, you know, I'm all older gentleman and I'm you know I was born into the 70s and obviously things have changed from the 70s here into 2014 things have changed drastically uh, technology has advanced uh, sins have advanced um, uh, 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 the, the bad aspects of life have evolved and become worse and more complex uh, uh, this is on the just the general life level, and I'm you know obviously in any place that you may come from, there's always going to be uh, those changes that you bore witness to. For example, uh, during the time of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wa alaihi wasallam, uh, after his death, things changed, um, uh, and likewise, change is always constant. We're either changing for the better or we're changing for the worse, but nothing stays the same. Uh, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has clearly uh, made clear that the outward condition of the people has a, 
connection with the inward condition. Uh, condition. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, إِنَّ اللَّهَ لَا يُقَيِّرُوا مَا بِكَوْمٍ حَتَّى يُقَيِّرُوا مَا بِأَنفُسِهِمْ Allah does not change the condition of a people until they change the condition of themselves. And the tafsir of this ayat of Quran is literally Allah does not change the good condition of a people into an evil one until they change their good condition of themselves into evilness. Uh, to elaborate, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that, or He has explained, or has come down to us via Rasulullah and Ahlul Bayt, peace be upon all of them, that when the people are in a state of righteousness, they're in a state of belief, they're in a state of obedience, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bestows upon them bounties and blessings in the dunya as well as akhirah. Now when that changes and the people become rebellious, the people become disbelieving, the people become transgressor, transgressors and overstep the limits that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has set, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala turns those blessings and the punishments in both dunya and akhirah. And these states are permanent as long as the individual is in this state. And this, mind you, is both individually and collectively. So if a brother or sister is believing, if a brother or sister is uh, practicing the religion properly, if the brother or sister is doing what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has commanded and staying away from what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has forbidden, then he or she will be in a state of uh, of uh, under the umbrella of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's rahmah, his mercy and his blessings. Uh, but when the person changes that and becomes disbelieving, becomes rebellious, becomes the transgressor, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes their life very difficult. As Allah says in Quran, Allah is not unjust to the people, verily they are unjust to themselves. So the key is that we have to recognize what change is, realize that we're always in a and uh, we're always changing, we're always evolving, but make sure that we, knowing this, make sure that we evolve positively. For example, uh, you know, a person may have been uh, a womanizer. He changes, realizes that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala dislikes zinna. He li dislikes fornication and adultery. My, uh, likewise, applies this knowledge and refrains from that, which was a positive change. A person could have been someone who, uh, in business, was deceiving and cheatful, recognizes that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala dislikes these things, makes the, uh, the proper change in his life and his conduct, and, and proceeds in another direction. Uh, and obviously there's opposite to that as well, when people who were righteous become wicked. For example, uh, coming from spending four and a half years in the facility and, uh, and uh, meeting a lot of brothers who've also spent years in the facility, many of them when they get released, although they were you know, pious and righteous in the facility, when they left, they abandoned their religion completely. So they went from uh, a good uh, standing with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to uh, apostatism. So obviously change can go from uh, from negative to positive and positive to negative. And we have to be mindful of this. We're always changing. We're either getting stronger or we're getting weaker. We're not staying the same. And spiritually, Alhamdulillah, you know, our bodies may get weaker as we get older. Uh, uh, but spiritually, as we continue, Allah gives us the means that we can become spiritually strong. And obviously when we die, that's another whole set of another a whole another set of changes. We go from the change of, of, of this life into the next life. And obviously death is just a doorway. So there's changes all across the board. But the thing we have to be mindful of is that our life situation is a direct reflection of our spiritual state. And like I mentioned, this is uh, both uh, in general, uh, specifically, and also collectively. Now, when you look at, you know, we like we're going to go backwards for a minute. When we look at things in this world, how there was a time uh, alcohol was pro forbidden, prohibition, and they changed and made it legal. And we know what alcohol does to society. There was a time where prostitution, be it illegal in some places, they've made it legal in some places. So we look at how society has become spiritually bankrupt. In fact, it's amazing that in a country that's supposed to be founded on uh, Christianity and the Bible, clearly goes against this. So from that aspect also, you can see the negative change. 
Uh, I remember a time where if you look on television, the women wore you know, bonnets on their head, like the Western movies, they wore bonnets on their head. These are not Muslims, mind you. They wore bonnets on their head, had the, the collar to their shirt up under the neck, and had the dress drag at the ground. You know, and now we look at our time, women are leaving the house with clothes on, yet naked at the same time. So we can look at the changes in society. And they're not positive changes, mind you, they're negative changes. Now let's look at even religion. When you look at the Islamic countries, many Islamic countries, truth be told, you know, Islam is about haq, it's about truth, that many of the Islamic countries have followed the example of America. You know, I know brothers who from different countries and everything that is accessible here is accessible there. Things that they're doing here, they're doing there. And obviously, um, uh, this is not a good change. This is a, a negative change. And, what we, and when this happens, when, for example, Muslims go from a state of belief to disbelief, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala withdraws His blessings or turns those blessings into punishments. And we have to be mindful of this. You know, we have to be mindful of this. And many times it said, you know, what I do, don't worry about it. You know, what I do is between me and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, leave me alone. You know, and a lot of people have this, this ignorant view where we're all connected. Now just think, look at this analogy. We're all on a boat. You know, we're all going on a cruise. We, you know, rent a cruise liner. Everybody pays their X amount of thousands of dollars for the crew. They're going, you know, for a two-week cruise, you know, to some paradise island. And everybody pays for their room, right? It should be that whatever I do in my room is my business. You have nothing to do with it, right? It's, you have your room, I have my room, leave me alone, mind your business. But now here it is, my room happens to be below water level, you know, because there's different levels on the ship. Now my room happens to be below water level, and I decide to drill a hole in the hole in my room. Mind you, it's my room, my business, I paid for it, you know, it's my drill, I decide to drill a hole in the bottom of the boat. Does that affect you? Do you have a right to say anything about it? Obviously you do, because what I do in my room, in the privacy of my room, you know, could actually sink and destroy everybody on the boat. So what's happening is, as I rebel against Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you know, clearly, manifestly, and no one hinders me, no one tries to stop me, no one speaks out against me, what I do is destroy the fabric of Islam. Now, imagine if that's just me in my room, you know, in the boat, and I'm drilling a hole, and water starts leaking in. Imagine if now, the guy in the next room does it, and the guy in the next room does it, and the lady in the next room does it. The boat's going to sink even quicker. And this is what happened to Islam. Not the religion of Islam itself, because it's pure and perfect, but the representation of it. Nobody is trying to stop anybody from doing anything wrong, and this is not Islam. You know, part of the, uh, the Faru'ideen is Nahya Anil Munkar. Obviously, Amr Bil Ma'roof, commanding good and forbidding evil. All it takes for evil to win out is for good people to do nothing. That's it. All it takes for evil to win is for good people to do absolutely nothing. And this is the time that we're living in where, uh, for example, when we're, we're speaking about change, and obviously we're Muslims, and there, are th there is changes, and there are things that facilitate change, or things that cause change. And Islam is something that is supposed to that is intended to, that is designed to facilitate change or cause change. Islam takes a sinner and makes them righteous, mutaqi, makes them pure. Islam takes one who was destined for the hellfire and gives them the opportunity to get the highest levels of paradise. Islam is a facilitator of change, providing you uh, believe and providing you uh, follow the prescription and provided you uh, uh, are determined. You know, Islam facilitates change. 